Murray and Michael Henry are bringing their show to Chicago for one night only, April 21st at the Den Theater. So get those tickets ASAP. Thank you both so much for your time today. Of course. Thanks for having us. Yeah, we're so excited. We, you know, we're excited for you to come to Chicago because you do a lot of videos on on, on social media that, that go viral. You do a lot of West Coast dates. So we're excited that like we're getting this proper show here in our, in our city. Yes, we decided we want to be there when it's not frigid. <laughs> yes. Last time we were there, it was very cold. And I'm a Midwest girl at heart. I'm from Ohio. So I'm excited to be back to my roots. The, the, the back to your roots. You've also done these hot gay guy songs in other cities. Are we going to get a Chicago version? Are you working on one when you're coming to Chicago? Let's just tease this. Yes. Wow. <laughs> what a tease. Not only will you get one, but I wrote a very long special one for the live show. So if people want to see it, they got to come to the show. Wow. So you're edging us. Honey, I'm always edging you. <laughs> <laughs> Michael, what I love too about your videos is that you're always, you're, you're bit, it's very educational. You also teach us some new terms like sugar twink. Something uh -huh. I never even knew existed in the world. Now I'm like, where have these sugar twinks been in my whole life? <laughs> they're, they're, I'm, they're right here. Here yeah, I am. Please. I am a sugar twang. A sugar twang. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Sometimes you have to create your own terms. And um, I, I, I enjoy that. I like making things up and uh, making things a thing. Because I, I want to know, too, like when the two of you are out either like separately or together, do people look like, oh, my goodness, I could be part of like their comedy or they're looking at me and how I'm dressed or behaving and like I know I'm going to be part of their routine in That's the future. People, people will say to be say to me, they'll be like saying something I'm like, oh my God, if I, if this ends up in a Michael Henry sketch, I'll just die. And um, if they're really like um, embarrassing or interesting, then yeah, they will. <laughs> <laughs> It's great for our sex lives. Amazing. It's amazing. I really, after I have sex, I always turn it into a sketch. It's really hilarious. People do ask me that a lot. They're like, any any flirtation, they're like, oh God, is you going to make a video about me? And I'm like, well, I am now. You just give me the idea. No. <laughs> You're like, thank, thank, you, thank, thank you for the note. Uh, talk a little bit about what the show is like. Is it stand-up crowd interaction? Is it stories? Obviously, we're going to get a Chicago song, but what, you know, describe what the experience is like. We call it the Michael and Tim gay extravaganza. Yeah. So Michael does 20 minutes of stand up. I do 20 minutes of stand up. And then we do 20 minutes together of crowd work, crowd mm -hmm. interaction. And there's some uh, musical improv and some songs mixed in there. By him. I basically just talk about my um, hilarious personal romantic life and how tragic <laughs> parts of it is. <laughs> And I just talk about how great my life is going. Right. It's good yin, it's good yin and yang. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I turn trauma into comedy and he turns comedy into trauma. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. Because Tim, you're getting married. I saw you that you the Cole Kidman's AMC outfit is the inspiration for what you might be wearing. Is that true? Is that false? Is that I mean because I already have that in my head. It's true. It's true. I will like this. This um guy wanted to design my outfit for me. So we've been talking about it. We've been so excited and we were brainstorming and I was like, yeah, I think I want like a suit, like a traditional suit, but like to gay it up and flare it up, I would like like um, rhinestone pinstripes. And then as we were designing it, we were like, wait a minute, this is just the AMC commercial. <laughs> but mine's going to be blue. But other than that, yeah, that's what we're going to look like. Uh -huh. And I'm going to wear a juicy couture. <laughs> I love it. Very J-Lo, very J-Lo. You know, he, he asked me if he was if I was worried that he was going to upstage me during my own wedding, and I was like, mm, I'm not too concerned. And I'm glad that you're not concerned, and but you will be concerned when you're concerned. <laughs> <laughs> but Mike, is that more of a challenge accepted? Very much so. I'm showing up the way I'm going to show up, and you're going to be wowed. I oh, well, I hope so. He brings the same book bag and the same outfit every time we go to a different city, so I'll be... Get up. ready. Get ready. <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm ready. Uh, Tim, the last, last, I, think, I believe the last time you were here in Chicagoland was doing your Witches show um, at, at, a, at a different theater, but are you... How excited are you for this Wicked movie? Tell me a little bit about, about that. I am so excited. Literally, a friend was just texting me this morning because they announced who's playing Dr. Dillamond. And 
it's Peter Dinklage and I'm so excited. Yeah, it's gonna be, I think the trailer looks amazing. It's gonna be incredible. Um, our friend Bowen Yang is in it. So I'm, I'm like literally just so thrilled that I'm gonna like see someone I know in this movie. It's gonna be, it's gonna be crazy. And Ariana's my friend. So uh, I'm so excited to be rooting on my, my friend Ariana. And Cynthia Revo is my daughter. So uh -huh. yeah. And his, um, what's his name? David Duchovny? What's the guy's name? Oh, you forgot your own friend's name. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> that is a detail, especially with, with what the two of you do and, and how viral some of these videos go. You get a lot of you know different celebrities liking the post and, and sharing the, the post as well, too. Um, you know, what's that feeling like, too, especially knowing that some of these other people who are in films and television are also loving the content that the two of you are creating. It's definitely yeah. very cool, but I'd be more happy if my mom would finally like one of my videos. <laughs> my parents don't even know how to access them on the internet. Exactly. Which I'm partly relieved about, I guess. I don't know if they would understand the bottom humor. <laughs> <laughs> We have a very particular audience space. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But I love it when, like, um, someone I love, like, you know who just started following me? Who? Amber Rose. Oh. Remember Amber Rose? Yeah. Kanye's, uh, Amber Kanye's Rose. ex? I just know her from Drag Race, right? She was, like, a, a, a guest judge. I'm sure time. she was. But <laughs> I was like, Amber Rose and Kate Beckinsale. Oh, that's <laughs> huge. That's really good. And you know what's so funny? I now follow Kate Beckinsale. I, she is... <laughs> She has a really kooky sense of humor. Yeah. She's really funny. She's actually opening for us in she Chicago. She's opening for us in Chicago. <laughs> breaking news, breaking news. Breaking news. <laughs> uh-huh. I want to get your both of your uh, opinions on a couple of topics. I saw that Grindr is creating an AI boyfriend, that that is going to be one of their possible options. Do you think that's a good idea or a bad idea? It's a good idea for him. And you know what? <laughs> I'm happy about it. I, you know what? I love lies. I love fiction and fantasy when it comes to my personal life. So let me feel the, feel the fantasy of having a hot boyfriend for a little while. I'll pay for that. I don't like it. I, I'm anti-AI in every way. I'm, I'm a child of the late 80s. So I grew up on Terminator 2 Judgment Day. Mm. And honey, I know what I know what happens with the robots. I'm a child of the 2010s. Please. So I'm, I'm all about, you know, technology, forward thinking, and um, Mac products. <laughs> <laughs> also, with, with Cowboy Carter and Orville Peck, it seems like the gays are taking over country music. If everyone starts looking like Orville Pack, honey, sign me up. Sign me up. I'm into it. Yeah, wear some chaps to our show. I'm down. Yeah. I'm down. Whatever kind of country style I'm into. I mean, I'm from, I grew up in New York, so I don't really know much about country, but uh, Orville. You know country or Kitchen Buffet. Pretty well. Very well, well. I, I, I'm a rewards member there, <laughs> <laughs> and um, I'm 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 happy about that part of my life, and um, I'm down for more country, gays and country. That's what we need. That, that's what we need. I want to ask too about, about the audiences that are coming to your show because I've gone to a couple of different shows with with the gay headliners or you know LGBTQ shows, thinking it's going to be full of guys or full of LGBTQ audiences, and it's mainly straight women mm -hmm. which i was just you know i've been surprised you know by that as an audience member but what's it like on stage are you kind of finding that too where you know straight women want to be able to you know to come to these shows i've been i will be a little bit more than maybe you thought so you know what i would say at least our audiences are 99 percent gay guys at least for me you have some female fans i don't think I do. I'm always shocked when a female comes up to me and says that they're a fan because I'm like, I have no idea what you're getting out of this uh, humor that I'm doing. But I'm, hey, I'm glad to have your allyship. Um, but I think most of my fans are gay guys. Yeah, we're very unusual in that way. At least Michael is. We always say Michael's like a unicorn in that way because gay guys don't always support other gay guys. They, no, they don't. They don't. But, um, Michael has really cracked that code. And I feel like uh, I've started to crack that code a little bit too, because our, our audience is definitely always majority gay guys. But then we always joke that anytime there's women in the audience, they're there to see me. Mm -hmm, yes. Because, uh, yeah, I, I think I skew a little bit more 
um, female. Female, yeah. <laughs> I see a little bit, a little bit more female. With I think the musical theater of it all, and all like, right. um, I think I, I think yeah. There's a certain element of like comedy that's like oh, gay best friend vibes, and I think I kind of give that off to the to the straight ladies who we love when they come to our shows. But Michael gives more um, yeah. sad, desperate yeah. gay guy. Oh yeah, sure. sure. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. Because, because that's the thing. Mix of gay guys and, and women. It's great. I mean, what every place that has us is like. Oh, your bar sales are so high because <laughs> gays 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 you, you got to get a cut of that that's what we got to work on the next contract you got to exactly, get a cut of yeah, that. Exactly, exactly 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 we did it at one show like a long time ago and then that was the last time yeah, I think they, the venue was wised up and they're like we're not giving you any of this now. <laughs> <laughs> as far as the crowd work are either of you surprised as far as like what comes up as far as like situations or, or things that people are going through that's our favorite part of the show, to be mm -hmm. honest. So I, honestly, there's no, we always say there's kind of like no wrong question and no wrong answer. Uh -huh. The only thing that surprises us is sometimes people don't have anything to ask. And some some of those cities, that that always throws us for a loop because we're like, gay people seem like they're talkative. Yeah, especially this is, you know, 40 minutes, 45 minutes into the show. People should be pretty boozed up. They they But sometimes when they are boozed up, they ask, kooky ass questions and interrupt other people <laughs> the weirdest one was in austin when an older gay guy like asked something like kind of shading gen z and then immediately a gen z raised their hand and then shaded the older generation and i was like oh good i was hoping there'd be a generation war at our very that it, it, it was like a jerry springer it was like a jerry springer and then another guy in the audience raised his hand he's like i want to answer both of their questions and we were like uh you I can get, get your, your own show, show. <laughs> <laughs> so it's you know heart therapy you know, but, because I, I saw the one about some guy already planning his hot girl summer of like, do I get back with the ex or do I plan this now? It's like he wasn't even waiting till like May. It was like in February exactly. or you know March. I, I needed exactly. to, he needed to know those answers. Yeah, it was another person shouting out too. So it's a group exercise <laughs> at times. <laughs> it is. It is group exercise. It's going to be a lot of fun. Definitely go check them out. Tim Murray, Michael Henry, uh, coming to Chicago one night only, April twenty first at the Zen Theater. Uh, the link for the uh, for the website is right there on the screen. Thank you both so much for your time and cannot wait to have you both in Chicagoland. Thank Yay. you. We can't wait.